Hi there, this is Lee. And on this channel, I've spoken of monstrous trade deals, world ending, extinction level, level trade deals um, that are up for consideration in the near future. I've spoken of Trans Pacific Partnership, the TPP, which involves the United States and the Pacific Rim nations, such as Mexico, Argentina, Chile. New Zealand, Australia, Japan, uh, places like that on the Pacific. I've also spoken of the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which is a trade deal between the United States and the European Union. Uh, there's also a trade deal between the European Union and Canada called CETA, C -E -T -A. And then there's uh, another uh, trade deal called TISA, Trade and Services something. I forget what the ac acronym is, but it's TISA. <laughs> there's so many of them. Um, these trade deals have been cropping up. Um, they are actually not just trade deals. More than that, um, they are not necessarily open borders or brotherhood or communication across borders. They're actually corporate grabs for power, whereas these multinational corporations want to overreach and invalidate constitutions, our constitution here in the United States, and then the constitutions of other sovereign nations. It's actually cementing the oligarchy, not just in informal control of world governments and economies, um, but also an effort to subordinate um, human rights, environmental rights, food safety, um, drug safety, prices, um, copyright law, everything, public services. It would subordinate that to corporate rule with no way to establish any sort of regulation on these corporations to protect the consumers, the citizens, the electorate from these corporations um, and the grab for profits and power and greed. There would be no way to protect ourselves from them. And this is via the investor state dispute settlement, which is the common factor between all of these trade deals. Um, we've seen what NAFTA can do. These forthcoming trade deals are so very much worse. In fact, as I describe them, they are world ending, ending the world as we know it and understand it, where we are ruled by profit and greed and the search for more profit and greed. So that sounds pretty sinister, um, but there is um, resistance. Um, if you view the Democratic National Convention, you saw many people holding up signs that said stop TPP or no TPP. People in the United States are fighting back. People in the European Union are fighting back to the point that the UK, uh, Britain actually left the European Union because they did not trust um, the corporate overreach, the oligarchy, the intrusion, the subordination of national sovereignty to um, oligarchical rule. And so there's fights, there's resistance going on. Uh, the European Union resistance is very strong. Um, Specifically, I'm going to speak about the um, Canadian Agreement. Uh, this is an article in the Globe and Mail. Free trade is under attack. Witness the collapse of European Union talks. This is dated um, October 24th. And so officials from Brussels and Belgium are trying to prevent a complete breakdown of negotiations for an EU-Canada free trade treaty that has taken seven years to finalize. This is the so-called Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, which is CETA. And the talks appeared to collapse last Friday. 
and it's highlighting how 2016 has seen a free trade um, undergoing political attack across much of the world. There's so much resistance. People are fighting back against these trade deals. We know what these trade deals bring because we know what previous trade deals have brought. People do not want more of the same. Um, and so there's discussion in this article about several other um, trade deals. And they're saying that the TPP is languishing in the U.S. Congress. Um, although Barack Obama has not yet submitted it to Congress, for ratification in both houses, he needs a majority. Um, Bernie Sanders is very much opposed to Trans-Pacific Partnership, and he's been vowing to fight against it. Um, he needs votes in the Congress, um, specifically the House. He thinks he has the best chance of stopping it. The problem is that Hillary Clinton supports Trans-Pacific Partnership. She's gone back and forth. But we understand that since she supported it 45 times in the past publicly, let alone privately what she's done, because she's public and private, uh, but we'll just say she supports it, um, which is her private position. Um, her public position is basically cosmetic until she thinks she gets um, voted into office. So Barack Obama is trying to assist her with that. Um, and there's rumors that he's planning to submit that trade deal to Congress for a vote for ratification in the lame duck session after the election, uh, which is how NAFTA was passed. So we know that game that's being played by yet another Clinton, or maybe it's being played by the same Clinton, since Hillary Clinton is bringing or plans to bring Bill Clinton with her into the White House uh, to run the economy, and this falls under economy. So it's the same game, perhaps, as NAFTA played again, the same tricks played. It's just, we've seen it before. But that's the TPP. Uh, and they're saying that the TTIP, the deal with the European Union and the United States, may also be unraveling. There's a lot of strong resistance in the European Union to these deals. And so the turbulence over CETA uh, came on Friday when Wallonia, which is a region of Belgium with a population of about 3.5 million, told Canada that its opposition to certain key provisions of the trade deal are actually red lines. They're deal breakers, in other words. So definitely there is concerns about increased pork and beef exports from Canada. And then also um, the introduction of the independent court system to settle disputes between states and foreign investors. This has been heavily criticized uh, because it seems like it's weighted towards the interests of multinationals against the government and against the citizens who are we the people who are the government. So any attack on the government by these corporations is actually an attack on the people because we the people are the government. And that's what the investor state dispute settlement is. And so they're saying that the CETA collapse could possibly set a, a precedent, not just for TTIP, but also TPP and TISA as well. And so that's this article. There's also um, articles at Common Dream, Democracy Prevails as People. People's Revolt Leaves Corporate Trade Agenda in Tatters. And this is also from October 24th. And so they're saying that the European Union failed to re reach a consensus on the Canada-EU trade agreement. And so campaigners are celebrating. Um, and so the Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michael said that he will not be able to join the other 27 EU nations and sign the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement because of entrenched opposition in the region of Wallonia to its pro-corporate provision. And so this is how um, grassroots resistance can actually stop multinationals, stop the corporate oligarchy 
by um, keeping strong and staying focused and actually staying knowledgeable about what these trade deals bring. Um, and so that's the um, article at um, Common Dreams. There's also another one. It's a press release from the Council of Canadians. It says CETA just imploded, future of the deal uncertain. And so they're saying that this is described as an epic failure and that there will be no signing ceremony on October 27th. And so they're saying that um, even though it was promoted as inevitable, CETA has become impossible in its current form. They're saying that democracy has prevailed and the agenda to boost corporate interest is in tatters. So there, there were petitions and there were demonstrations um, all across Europe um, and cities across Germany. 88% of Austrians opposed CETA because of the power shift to transnational corporations. And then 81% of people in Europe said that they believe CETA would undermine French standards protecting health, food quality, the environment, and the climate. And so um, there are other EU governments that had concerns, um, but they were unwilling to block the deal. It was Belgium that blocked the deal. Um, but they're saying that only 17% of Germans support CETA and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which is their deal with the United States. So, um, there's heavy resistance in the European Union. They're actively fighting because it would lower all of their standards, food safety, environment, health, um, things like that, um, climate. They won't tolerate it. Things that we ridicule here in the United States, they actually fight to protect in the European Union, particularly um uh, Germany, they have a um, very strong and robust and growing and successful renewable energy industry in Germany that they want to protect under these trade deals. There's no allowance for favoritism for renewable energy. So renewables like solar and wind and uh, things like that, hydro, would actually have to compete with fossil fuel rather than preference given to renewables. And Germany wants to fight for its renewable energy industry. So they're resisting for that and other reasons. And France wants to protect um, safety standards in general. So there's um, different reasons, but they're combining forces um, to reject these deals. And thankfully, um, the European Union citizenship have taken the lead on um, these deals, CETA, and then also the TTIP, which helps us out. Now it's up to us to resist the Trans-Pacific Partnership. They've shown us that it can be done. We just need to do it. So these are these trade deals. Um, I'm going to go to another article at um, the Common Dreams, and this is about Gary Johnson and the fact that um, there are still progressives who have thrown support to Gary Johnson, perhaps not fully understanding that the <clears throat> excuse me, the Libertarian Party actually supports these trade deals. They support NAFTA, they support TPP, they support TTIP, um, they support free trade in general. Um, they they are pro corporate. They are pro business. They are um, anti-regulation. And so this article is just once again explaining that libertarianism is not progressive. Um, that libertarianism is actually more in line with the corporate policies of the Hillary Clinton type of wing of the Democratic Party, pro-business, pro-Wall Street, pro-money. Um, and um, some aspects of the Republican Party as well. And it, um, just spelling out the fact that Gary Johnson and the Libertarian Party oppose the minimum wage, not only raising the minimum wage, they oppose 
the existence of a minimum wage, certainly they do not support the $15 minimum wage. Um, they also um, uh, support that agreements between private employers and employees are outside the scope of government, which means no protection from sexual harassment on the job, no protection for racial har harassment or um, unequal um, compensation practices. The money does what the money wants to do. The business does what the business wants to do, free from government protections. They want to privatize health care. They prefer a free market health care system. Privatize education. Um, education is best provided by the free market. Parents should have responsibility for all funds expended on their children. No public education. Uh, they want to phase out Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Retirement planning is a responsibility of the individual, of the government. They want to oppose laws that uh, limit campaign contributions and lobbying. They want to repeal the income tax, and they favor free market banking, which means um, unregulated uh, financial sector. And they also want to privatize private land and take a free market approach to environmental protection. Uh, so businesses decide how they want to protect the environment. Um, so they're saying that with the Libertarian Party, there is no social safety net. It's the strong and the wealthy that survive and thrive. Everyone else, the old, the infirm, the young, the vulnerable among us, um, they are have no protection from the strong who might, um, without any sort of regulation, prey upon the weak. Um, um, they do... Um, prefer the legalization of pot or marijuana. So you have your pot, maybe with the Libertarian Party, but you will also have um, economic inequality, um, air and water quality that's um, of poor quality. Uh, you would have um, financial panics and crashes, unsafe workplaces, and unequal access to adequate uh, education, health care, um, and economic security. Um, that would only go to a privileged minority. And so there's a benefit to the social, I mean, to libertarian, um, social, um, social liberal aspect. But then the uh, fiscal conservative aspect, um, if you're progressive, um, it's definitely not lining up with a Bernie Sanders type platform, certainly not with a Jill Stein platform, which is actually 90% uh, aligned with Bernie Sanders. Everything that Bernie Sanders stood for, stood for in terms of progressiveness, um, definitely against the Trans-Pacific Partnership against the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Trans Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TISA, NAFTA, all these other trade deals that are really harmful and unacceptable to a progressive um, way of thinking and philosophy. Um, it's opposite of what Bernie Sanders stood for. Bernie Sanders stood for a $15 minimum wage, uh, protection for the environment, human rights, human justice, social justice, economic equality uh, with government regulation. And so that's more in line with the Jill Stein Green Party platform, not so much the libertarian platform. And as we can see, these trade deals are not to be ignored or um, treated as a side issue. Uh, there's been commentary from some to say, well, that's just one issue. These trade deals encompass an entire spectrum of our lifestyle. Uh, if you ever get a look at what the Trans-Pacific Partnership entails or any of these other trade deals, they are not just a one issue um, aspect of any party. They cross every single issue. 
Um, that's how large they are. So they are not to be underestimated. Um, if you are progressive, um, definitely um, I would caution you to really understand um, what a, a libertarian platform is as opposed to maybe a Green Party platform and a progressive platform um, and how free trade um, enters into all of that. Um, good luck. <laughs>